What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Luke and Friends NFL Podcast, back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak, and this is the 2021 NFL season opener recap. Absolutely great game to start the season. The Dallas Cowboys at the Tampa Bay Bucks, the defending champs. Um, I picked the Bucks by to win by seven or more. Cowboys are playing without six-time Pro Bowler guard Zach Martin out due to COVID. So it was a real, you know, real good game. But I expected the the Bucks to do work. Um, you know, it wouldn't have surprised me if they blew the game out a little bit, won by double digits. But I didn't go that far with my prediction, and uh, it turned out to be an even better game than I could have predicted. So let's get into this thing. Um, first thing I noticed. You know, on the opening kick, you know, it's always a touchback now. And uh, that kind of frustrates me because being a huge fan of Devin Hester and Dante Hall and Josh Cribbs and these great returners, I kind of miss the kickoffs coming out, you know, and being able to be returned. So that kind of sucked. But it is what it is at this point. You know, you kind of have to expect that. You know, the rule changes, all that. But. I just wanted to say that I miss the kickoffs. I miss kick returns. You know, now it's always a touchback. Anyways, let's get into this game. Um, Cowboys defense starts the game well, forces Tampa Bay to go three and out on their first possession. Uh, but a bright spot, Bucks punter Bradley Pinion with a great coffin corner punt, pinning the Cowboys at their own two yard line. So maybe Tampa Bay has something in their punter, Bradley Pinion. He did a great job especially early on in this game. Dak Prescott getting his first action after being shut down with a shoulder strain and being on a pinch count, uh, you know, during preseason and all that. Um, But he started and was good to go for this game. His first pass of the game out of his own end zone uh, as a 28-yarder to a wide-open Amari Cooper. Dak looked great right out of the gate and throughout this game. He looked really good. So Dallas shouldn't have much to worry about there. He looks healthy. He looks good to go, you know, for the long season. The Cowboys drive uh, to midfield, and then a false start on 3rd and 10 kind of derails their drive. They're forced to punt. Tampa Bay takes over. Tom Brady sharp on the second drive. Brady completes throw after throw. Uh, Marches him down for a five-yard touchdown pass to Chris Godwin. Uh, Antonio Brown, a bright spot on this drive. Two catches for 44 yards. And the Bucs take a 7-0 lead. Uh, Cowboys and to right right back, Dak Prescott, very accurate. uh, Leads Dallas down for a 22-yard touchdown pass to C.D. Lamb to tie the game at 7-7. Bucs corner, Sean Murphy bunting, gets his arm pinned. On the touchdown throw, and his arm takes a hit and is injured. Ruled out for the game. It didn't look good. Looks like a dislocated elbow. Not good news there for uh, the Bucks and corner Sean Murphy bunting. We'll see how quickly he can get back. Uh, But it was a pretty nasty injury. Uh, The the next drive at, you know, 7-7, Antonio Brown uh, catches... Another one, three catches for 67 yards in the first quarter. Uh, I tweeted, A.B. is in midseason form, you know, out there. And people were tweeting, he looks like the old A.B. I'll tell you what, if the Bucs get old school Antonio Brown, the league's in trouble. He wasn't, you know, he was wide receiver number three last year. And in this game, he looked like wide receiver one. Uh, Godwin had a good game. Mike Evans didn't do much, and Antonio Brown was really the go-to guy. Bucks forced to punt at midfield, and once again, Bradley Pinion pins the Cowboys deep at their own 10-yard line. Uh, Cowboys try to run a draw on third and three, but running back Tony Pollard runs right into Ndamukong Sue for no gain. Didn't like the play call. Uh, Cowboys go three and out. Uh... I'm not a big fan of the running back draw on third and three. Uh, Running back draw is kind of an iffy play. I'd rather do that on like a first and ten or a second and manageable, not a a must-have third and three. I would have kept the ball in Dak's hands. 
But I can't say much because the, the running backs didn't get much play in this game at all, and that was kind of frustrating me. And I think that's kind of why that, I mean, it was a great game, though. It worked out, so. Um, Bucks punter Jaden Mickens with a good return, sets the ball up at, uh, near midfield for Tampa Bay. Brady with passes to Chris Godwin and Gronk sets up a two-yard play-action rollout touchdown pass to Gronkowski in a small window. Brady just shows it doesn't matter what the window is. He believes he can get it in there. He's got, you know, great accuracy. And uh, the Bucks take a 14-7 lead. The Brady-Gronk combination is still so tough to defend after all these years. Gronk has great hands. You saw him make a one-handed catch in this game. He's hard to bring down. He's such a big body. He knows how to bounce off of defenders and keep going. And Brady's just so accurate. And uh, you see, they have real good chemistry. Um, Prescott marches the Cowboys down, uh, setting up a 31-yard field goal attempt for kicker Greg Zerline, who misses the field goal. Not even close. A bad kick there for, for Greg Zerline, a.k.a. Legatron. Um, not really living up to his name there. Uh, the Bucks take over after the missed field goal. And the first play is a handoff to running back Ronald Jones, who gets the ball punched out, Peanut Tillman style, by Demarcus Lawrence. Cowboys recover. It's easy to blame Rojo here, but I mean, I've seen that punch move a lot, being a Bears fan, seeing Peanut Tillman do it all the time. That's a very effective def play by a defender at forcing fumbles. Um, so credit to Tank Lawrence. Great defensive play to knock that ball out. Cowboys $100 million defensive end, earning his money there uh, with a big impact play. Uh, Dak Prescott in shotgun receives a low snap and drops the ball on the turf, but picks it up quickly and fires a five-yard touchdown pass to Amari Cooper. A great heads-up play by Dak to uh, get the, you know, pick the ball up and not panic and uh, you know keep the play alive and still throw for a touchdown. Uh, the Cowboys picking on the Sean Murphy bunting replacement, Jamel Dean, uh, in this game and on that play. And then, uh, so it's 14-13. Greg Zerline comes out for the extra point and hits the upright. No good. So Bucks still lead 14-13. Things were not looking good for Greg Zerline early in this game. And that's when I was tweeting, like, man, they might, they might be cutting his ass after this game. So not a good start for Legatron. Uh, the first play of the next drive, uh, Tom Brady throws a screen pass that goes off of Leonard Fournette's hands and is intercepted by the rookie corner, Trayvon Diggs. An interception in his first career game. Great play by Trayvon. Back-to-back um, -back turnovers for Tampa and the Cowboys defense making plays. Uh, I'm a big Trayvon Diggs fan. Uh, he's got that dog in him. I, after watching Hard Knocks, the Cowboys on Hard Knocks, you can see him talking and going at Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. And uh, he's just got that dog in him. You want him on your team. He's gonna he's a future star, in my opinion. I believe he's the younger brother of uh, Bill's star wide receiver, Stephon Diggs. So he's got the genetics, uh, you know. So look out for Trayvon Diggs going forward, uh, the former Bama corner, making plays in his NFL debut. Uh, Dak Prescott nearly intercepted by linebacker Levante David. And he had a pass earlier, nearly intercepted in the end zone by Carlton Davis. So Dak getting away with a couple of passes early. He was getting a lot of praise, and rightly so, coming off an injury. He showed no fear uh, from the, that nasty injury he took last year. It wasn't in his mental or anything. He, he navigated the pocket very well, very confidently. Wasn't looking at the pass rush and delivering dime balls. But he did take a couple of reckless shots. Uh, he's got great trust in his receivers, which he should. But he took a couple of shots that were maybe a little too risky for my liking. Uh, but overall, a great game for Dak. So I can't hate on him too much. Uh, Cowboys settle for a Zerline 35-yard field goal attempt. And he actually makes this one. And the Cowboys take a 16-14 to lead. Uh, but then the, the Bucks get the ball, and Antonio Brown uh, gets Cowboys corner Anthony Brown with a little hesitation move and beats him deep for a 47-yard touchdown pass 
Brady put it right on the money. And Antonio Brown was just absolutely balling out in the first half. Uh, looking like wide receiver one, looking like Pittsburgh Steelers Antonio Brown. And if that's what Tampa Bay gets this year, they're going to be a problem. They're already a problem, but a healthy, uh, balling out Antonio Brown, you know, like A.B. says, call God because they're going to need it. Uh, A.B., business was booming tonight. Bucks up 21-16 at that point. Um, Cowboys trying to get points before halftime. But linebacker Shaq Barrett sacks Dak Prescott, taking him out of field goal range. And then a holding call on guard Connor Williams, who had his hands full all night uh, blocking Vita Vea. And uh, that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. Vita Vea got you know, injured last year, and uh, it wasn't talked about enough, the, the impact that Vita Vea uh, brings to the game, brings to that D-line for Tampa Bay. The Cowboys try for a 60-yard field goal. But Zerline misses it. So uh, then the Bucks get the ball. Tail Tom Brady tries a Hail Mary attempt to end the first half and gets intercepted by Jordan Lewis. So the stats show Tom Brady with two first half interceptions. Disregard those. Neither really on him. He hit Fournette in the hands. This is a Hail Mary attempt. Um, so, you know, that's where stats can lie a little bit. So the Bucks lead 21-16 at halftime. And in my opinion, at this point, I still felt like if the Bucks could clean up the turnovers, they could pull away in the second half and kind of run away with this game. That was my thinking. Um, but we got a better second half than I was thinking. Um, let's go here. So the Cowboys get the ball to start the second half and march down to the Tampa Bay two-yard line on a third and goal. Uh, the Cowboys call a quarterback option pitch out to Zeke Elliott. Uh, tight end Blake Jarwin misses a block. Very poor effort on this block attempt by Blake Jarwin. And safety Andrew Adams uh, gets past him and stops Zeke Elliott for no gain. Some people were saying Zeke needs, needs to break that tackle. And uh, he doesn't have the same quickness or explosion that he used to have. For me, it's hard to say. Zeke didn't get enough touches in this game. I put this more on Blake Jarwin, man. He's got to make that block. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't just that he missed the block. It looked like pretty poor effort, in my opinion. So that was kind of frustrating. Cowboys forced to settle for a 21-yard field goal. Zerline makes it and cuts the lead to 21-19. Uh, Bucks go three and out on their first possession of the second half. So here's an opportunity for Dallas to go down, take the momentum, take the lead. But on the first play of, the, of this possession, Dak Prescott fires a pass into a crowd. Uh, for some reason, two Cowboys receivers are in a very similar area, drawing three defenders right around there. So it's a group of five people. Dak fires it in there. I mean, it's a damn good throw because it hits C.D. Lamb in the hands, but C.D. can't haul it in. It bounces off his hands and right to Carlton Davis for the interception. I don't really like the decision here by Dak, firing it in there with five people right there. I don't really know what the play call is to have two receivers real close to each other there. Um, so I didn't like that decision or the, you know, whatever was going on there, I didn't like it. Uh... Some will argue, you know, Dak hit him in the hands. Very true. CD's got to catch that. But I would rather Dak not force the ball in there with with traffic all around. Um, so a little, you know, shared blame there for, for Dak and CD. So the interception sets Tampa Bay up at the Dallas 35-yard line. Brady and Gronk again showing great chemistry on this drive, connecting twice. And then on the touchdown pass, you can see that Gronk is supposed to block. And he sees, he senses and sees the blitz going. So once he sees the blitz, he gets off the block and gets open on a route. Like gets out, gets open. Brady sees it too. The chemistry is there. Uh, Brady hits Gronk, who's got the defender trailing him. The guy who's just blocking goes for 11-yard touchdown pass. Gronk's second touchdown of the game. And the Bucks take a 28-19 lead. Um, this just goes to show you 
you know, Brady and Gronk have been doing it for so long and they're just so good at their craft, have great chemistry uh, for playing together all those years. And it worked out well there. Used to be, you know, an automatic touchdown in New England. Now we're seeing it in Tampa Bay. Uh, Cowboys down nine, get the ball. Um, Dak Prescott fires a beautiful 21-yard touchdown pass to Amari Cooper. Cuts the lead 28-26. Like I said, Prescott playing great in this game. Navigating the pocket very well. Throwing the ball with, uh, you know, with heat on it and believing it. You know, throwing it with confidence. Not... He didn't look like a guy who took a nasty injury last year. He looked like a or or had a strained shoulder and didn't practice. He looked like a guy that is mid-season form and was just ripping it out there. So very encouraging for Cowboy fans to see Pres Prescott playing as well as he did in this game. And uh, we talked about this on the podcast, you know, earlier this week, where you know it was brought up like. Dak was on pace for 6,000 yards last year, and everyone's like, well, that's unrealistic, and then he got hurt. Um, Prescott throws for 400 yards tonight, and if he's balling like this, who knows, man, who knows? Maybe 5,000 yards is attainable. Dak is showing that he's worth the money. He's worth the highest-paid quarterback uh, like he's getting paid. So it'll be interesting going forward to see how these Cowboys do. Playing better on defense and Dak looking like the same old guy. Now questions about the running game with Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard. Um, for the Bucks, so it's 28-26. On third and 10, Tom Brady deep ball to Chris Godwin. Hits him in the hands, but Godwin unable to bring it in. Leads to a Tampa Bay punt. Cowboys again with another opportunity, but they go three and out. Can't capitalize. Give, it, give the ball back to Tampa Bay. The Bucks drive all the way down to the Cowboy two-yard line. But a spinning Chris Godwin trying to get into the end zone gets hit by safety DeMonte KZ who forces a fumble. Ball recovered in the end zone by Jordan Lewis who brings it out to the 12-yard line. A huge takeaway by the Cowboys defense. A uh, big momentum shift, an opportunity for the, for the Bucks to score another touchdown. Big takeaway here and the Cowboys get the ball back. A great hit, great force fumble by safety DeMonte Casey. Wearing the number 18, it took me a little bit to figure out who it was on the hit. Uh, seeing number 18 out there, it looks weird, a safety wearing that. That's Randall Cobb's old number when he was in Dallas. And I was like, what the hell, they got a wide receiver out there. But kind of looks cool, DeMonte Casey rocking the 18 at the safety position, so... Uh, opportunistic Cowboys defense in week one, taking the ball away, forcing turnovers. Credit to new defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. Uh, you know, they looks pretty good at, at taking the ball away at least. Uh, at the two-minute warning in the fourth quarter on third and 11, Dak Prescott connects with C.D. Lamb for 31 yards to move the Cowboys in the field goal range. A huge play in this game. But then a holding call. On guard, Connor Williams, like I said, struggling with Vita Vea in this game. His second holding call uh, would have been a sack if he doesn't grab him. So, you know, at that point, you can understand it. Moves it back to third and 16 at the Tampa Bay 40. Then a 10-yard pass from Prescott to Amari Cooper sets up fourth and six at the Tampa Bay 30. So the Cowboys run out kicker Greg Zerline for a 48-yarder to take the lead. Uh, Zerline struggles early in this game, so this wasn't a sure thing. But credit to Greg Zerline. He comes in and absolutely redeems himself, nailing a 48-yarder with a minute 24 left to put the Cowboys up 29-28. And this is what I tweeted after this kick. I said, Zerline makes it. Cowboys take the lead. Too much time for Tom Brady, though. And, uh... This was just me. I've seen this movie before. This is the most clutch quarterback I've ever seen in my life. He's got seven Super Bowls to, to show for it. You don't give the ball to Tom Brady with time on the clock, especially a minute 24. Um, my Bears got lucky last year. The only way you stop Tom Brady from, you know, winning, doing a game-winning drive 
is he's got to forget what down it is. And that's only happened once in his entire career. Uh, it happened last year. But he doesn't forget this time. Uh, Bucks come down. Brady executes, moves the Bucks down the field. Uh, perfect back shoulder throw to Chris Godwin for 24 yards. Gets the Bucks down to the Dallas 18-yard line. Cowboys corner Jordan Lewis falls down in coverage. Some uh, arguing that Godwin pushed off to create separation. Uh, here's how I see it. It was a perfect back shoulder throw by Tom Brady, first of all. Um, I don't really see Godwin's arm extend for the push off. That's something that the referees look for is an obvious arm extension push off. And I didn't really see that from Chris Godwin here. Um, you know, if you, if someone can show me a clip of his arm extending, but I didn't really see it. I thought it was a pretty good job by him. The contact looked minimal. Uh, so they didn't get the call. It would have been a ticky tack, you know, penalty in my opinion. Huge play to set up for the game winning field goal. And, uh, Bucks kicker Ryan Suckup drills the game winning 36 yard field goal with just two seconds left in the game. And Tampa Bay wins 31-29. Clutch Tom Brady, the GOAT, does it again. The, a great two-minute uh, fourth-quarter drive, trailing by one to win the game. How many times have we seen this? And as NFL fans, do you really get tired of it? Tom Brady is a... It, if you hate on Tom Brady, here's what I'd say. Stop it. it. Appreciate greatness. Tom Brady... I used to be a Brady hater, a, a Patriot hater... But Tom Brady, at age 44, is still doing this shit, man. And we got to respect it. It's unreal. I mean, I, I can't believe it. We're witnessing greatness every time Tom Brady comes out there. And at age 44, this is unprecedented as hell. So we got to appreciate it. Hey, if you want to hate, you choose to hate, do you. But I'm not going to be a hater. I'm going to appreciate greatness. Tom Brady... An absolute legend and the GOAT, in my opinion. Um, and, he, and he proves it again tonight. So, Bucks start out the season 1-0 and in dramatic fashion. Cowboys played a great game, but, uh, you know, couldn't get it done in the end and fall to 0-1. That's the difference in the NFL, man. Games come down to small details, you know, and you got to execute throughout the entire game. Greg Zerline, you know, after the game, talking about if I did my job and made my kicks, we win the game. You know, you're right. You got to, you know, every point matters. That's why I'm not a fan of going for two points and, and not taking a field goal when you're in range. If you've got a reliable kicker that you trust, trot him out there. Three points is always greater than zero. So... Um, looking at the stats, Tom Brady throws for 379 yards, four touchdowns, two picks. Prescott throws for 403 yards, three touchdowns, and one pick. Neither team's running game got going at all. Zeke and Fournette held to 33 and 32 yards, respectively. The, uh, analytics crowd rejoices, but don't expect this to continue. I think throughout week one, we'll see the running backs a lot more involved. Uh, this just wasn't a, a good game for it. You know, Bucks running backs fumbling a little bit early on. And uh, the Cowboys, you know, just... I think that's kind of hurt them in the end, too, is not feeding Zeke, not getting Tony Pollard involved in the game enough and being too one-sided. But, you know, I'm a big running back fan. I'm a big, you know, use the running backs. Running backs matter. Running backs are key to... To winning football games, so I'm on the other side of this conversation. Uh, looking at the receivers, um, Antonio Brown, big game, five catches for 121 yards and a touchdown. Chris Godwin, nine catches for 105 yards and a touchdown. And Rob Gronkowski, still doing it, eight catches for 90 yards and two touchdowns. Big red zone threat, threat anywhere on the field, really. You get the ball in Gronk's hands, and he's just He's hard to defend. He's hard to ta hard to tackle. Had a really nice one-handed catch in this game. He's a beast. Still doing it. Amari Cooper for the Cowboys. Big game for him. 13 catches, 139 yards, and two touchdowns. And C.D. Lamb, 7 catches for 104 yards and a touchdown. 
could have been even bigger if he had a couple more catches. Had at least, well, I want to say two drops, maybe more, for CD. So he's got to clean some of that up. Cowboys kicker Greg Zerline goes three for five on field goals, two for three on extra points. Something to keep an eye on for the Cowboys going forward. Uh, can't be having Greg Zerline missing kicks uh, consistently. Otherwise, you're going to have to replace him. I might have to go back and look at that. Was he three for five? I only remember uh, that one miss. He's got a, like a missed field goal and a missed extra point. Missed 31. Oh, no, because he missed that 60-yarder right before half. That makes sense. So, all right. Um, Tom Brady remains undefeated in his career against the Dallas Cowboys. So, gets it done again. And then I got to get a little something off my chest here. Uh, Packers media guy... Peter Bukowski, uh, you know, he's one of those, he, he tweets, he's got sarcastic tweets, he's, he's a little bit of a troll, I'm not a big fan, and I know Packer fans that aren't really a big fan of him either. This is a tweet he sends off during the game, like, season opener, we're all hype, we're watching football, we're enjoying it, and this is what this guy sends out, we're watching Antonio Brown, you know, show out, and the reemergence of Antonio Brown, and in my opinion, Antonio Brown playing at his best is is great for the game of football. You say what you want about Antonio Brown's character, his off the field stuff. He's a tremendous athlete, and a, as a football fan, I enjoy watching him on the field. He's one of the best receivers I've ever seen in this game. So I've got respect for that. Uh, what, regardless of what you think of him off the field, respect is on the field game. This is what Peter Bukowski says. He tweets, So, we are going to talk a bunch about Antonio Brown and not talk at all about the ugly off-field reasons he went through three teams in less than a year. End quote. I mean, come on, Peter Bukowski. You really got to be that guy on opening night, you know, with the fans back. So we've had two full years of, you know... No real football, and and a, you know so long without football. Football's finally back. A great game, and you gotta send off a tweet like this. I just think it's childish. It's trolling, and he got a lot of hate for it. A lot of heat on Twitter, and rightly so, man. If that's how you're gonna tweet, you should expect hate. You should expect some heat from the fans because we're trying to enjoy it, man. We're trying to have a good time. And you're going to send out some stuff like this. He's an asshole. Uh, if you want my opinion, he's an asshole. I'm not a fan. And uh, it's not because he covers the Packers. I like some of the Packers, guys. Peter Bukowski just sucks. Plain and simple. And uh, he even got a response from Kevin Durant, who retweeted it with a picture of LeBron's face, like, staring, like, really? Like, that's, that's the tweet you're going to send out? That's the question you got? Or that, you know... Like, go away. You know, you're a troll. No one likes you. Like, that's my take. And that, and that's kind of how a lot of people were feeling. Um, so, yeah. Don't be an asshole. Appreciate the game. Uh, we all love this game. And we all respect great talent. And, uh, you know, when Antonio Brown's out there doing what he's doing, that move he put with a little hesitation and then hit the Jets... And just flew right past Anthony Brown. And Brady hit him in stride for that touchdown. That was beautiful, man. And why you got to bring up someone's past. And it's obvious to a lot of us and to me that I believe Antonio Brown was going through some mental shit at that time. And trying to figure himself out. And uh, he gets back and see, you know, he's, what has he done since signing with the Bucks? Stayed out of trouble. Kept his head down. Hasn't been talking a lot of shit, and just fucking bald. Uh, what is there negative to say about that? You got to go back two, three years, four years to drudge up this guy's past because you you got a bone to pick because you're a troll and a hater? Get out of here, Pete Bukowski, man. I'm here to appreciate the game. I'm here to appreciate greatness. And I, and I for one, love to see Antonio Brown back on the field, seemingly having his shit together, and putting on a show for us. That's my rant. Rant over. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. 
Uh, there's going to be a couple of changes here going forward with the podcast. It might be more me so going forward, me only. Uh, we had to, you know, kind of move in a different direction. And so I hope you guys uh, appreciate it. Enjoy the, the episodes and uh, subscribe. Leave some comments. Let, it, let me know what you think. And uh, we'll keep these episodes coming out. Can't wait for, for college football on Saturday. And the whole slate of week one games on Sunday and then the Monday night game. I'll keep these episodes coming out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for all the support. Um, You guys rock. Uh, Have a great week, guys. Peace out.